Hello. Good afternoon. <clears throat> and welcome to story time with Captain Party. Today we're going to be reading chapter 19. Trundling along here. We're almost halfway through the book now. Doing good. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Black and white chickens stagger around Colonial Dunsboro. Chickens with their heads flattened. Here are chickens with no wings, or only one leg. Here are chickens with no legs, swimming with just their ragged wings through the barnyard mud. Blind chickens without eyes, without beaks. Born that way. Defective. Born with their little chicken brains already scrambled. There's an invisible line between science and sadism, but here it's made quite visible. Not that my brains are going to fare much better. Just look at my mom. Dr. Paige Marshall should see them all struggle along. Not that she'd understand. Jenny here with me. Jenny reaches into the back of his pants and pulls out a page of the classified ads from the newspaper, all folded up in a little square. For sure this is contraband. His Royal High Governorship sees this and Denny's going to be banished for unemployment. For real, right out in the barnyard in front of the cow shed, Denny hands me this newspaper page. And except for the newspaper, we're being so authentic, it's like nothing we're wearing has even been washed in this century. People are snapping pictures, trying to take some part of it home as a souvenir. People point video cameras, trying to trap you into their vacation. They're all shooting you, shooting the crippled chickens. Everybody's trying to make every minute of this present last forever. Preserve every second. Make it count. Inside the cow shed, there's the gurgle of somebody sucking air through a bomb. You can't see them, but there's that silent tension of a bunch of people leaning together in a circle, trying to hold their breath. A girl coughs. Ursula the milkmaid. There's so much reefer in there, a cow coughs. This is when we're supposed to be harvesting dried cow shit. You know, cow piles. And then he goes, read it, dude. And the circle, the circle to add, he opens the page for me to see. That ad, there, he says. There's the one, little classified, circle in red ink. With the milk made around, the tourists, there's nothing less than a trillion ways that we're about to get caught. And for real, Denny could not be more obvious. Against my hand, the paper's still warm from Denny's butt. And when I go, not here, dude, and I try to give the paper back, when I do that, Denny says, sorry, I didn't mean to, you know, incriminate you. If you want, I can just read it for you. And the grade schoolers who come here, it's a big deal for them to visit the chicken house and watch the eggs hatch. Still, a regular chick isn't as interesting as, say, a chicken with only one eye or a chicken with no neck or with a stunted, paralyzed leg. So the kids shake the eggs. They shake them hard and put them back in to hatch. So if what's born is deformed or insane, it's all for the sake of education. The lucky ones are just born dead. Curiosity or cruelty, for sure. Me and Dr. Marshall would go around and around on this point. I shovel up some cow piles. Careful so they don't break in half so the wet insides don't stink. With all the cow crap on my hands, I have to not bite my nails. Next to me, Denny reads, Free to a good home, 23-year-old male, recovering self-abuser, limited income and social skills, house trained. And then he reads a phone number. It's his phone number. It's my folks, dude. It's their phone number, Denny says. It's like they're hinting. He found this left on his bed last night, and then he says, They need me. I say, I understand that part. With a wood shovel, I'm still getting the poops and piling them in a big woven thing, you know, a basket thing. And then he says, Hey, can he come live with me? 
We're talking plan Z here, Denny says. I'm only asking you as a last resort. Because he doesn't want to bug me? Or because he's not nuts about living with me? I don't ask. You can smell corn chips on Denny's breath. Another violation of historic character. He's such a shit magnet. The milkmaid Ursula comes out of the cow shed and looks at us with her stoner eyes just about filled with blood. If there was a girl you liked, I say to him, if she wanted to have sex just so she could get pregnant, would you do it? Ursula grabs her skirts up and comes stomping through the cow poop and her wooden clogs. She kicks a blind chicken that's in her way. Somebody snaps a picture, kicking. A married couple start to ask Ursula to hold their baby for a picture, but then maybe they see her eyes? I don't know what Denny says. A baby's not like having a dog. I mean, a baby lives a long time, dude. But what if she wasn't planning to have the baby, I say. Denny's eyes go up and down, looking at nothing, and then he looks at me. I don't understand, he says. You mean like sell it? I mean like sacrifice it, I say. And then he says, dude, just supposing, I say, she's going to scramble its little unborn fetus brain and suck the mess out with a big needle and then inject that stuff into the head of somebody you know who has brain damage to cure them, I say. And Denny's lips hang up in a crack. Dude, you don't mean me, do you? I mean my mom. It's called a neural transplant, and some people call it a neural graft. And it's the only effective way to rebuild my mom's brain at this late stage. And it would be better known except for problems getting, you know, the key ingredient. A ground-up baby, Penny says. A fetus, I say. Fetal tissue. Paige Marshall said, Dr. Marshall, with her skin and her mouth. Ursula stops next to us, and she points at the newspaper in Denny's hand. She says, unless the date on that 1734, you're fucked. That's a violation of character. The hair on Denny's head is trying to grow back, except some is ingrown and trapped under red, red and white pimples. Ursula steps away and then turns back. Victor, she says, if you need me, I'll be churning. And I say, later, and she slogs off. Then he says, dude, so it's like a choice between your mom and your firstborn. It's not a big deal the way Dr. Marshall sees it. We do it every day. Kill the unborn to save the elderly. In the gold wash of the chapel, breathing her reasons into my ear, she asks every time we burn a gallon of gas or an acre of rainforest, are we killing the future to preserve the present? The whole pyramid scheme of Social Security, she said, with her breasts wedged between us, she said, I'm doing this because I care about your mother, or at least what you could do is your small part. I didn't ask what she meant by my small part. And then he says, so tell me the truth about yourself. I don't know. I couldn't get through it with the fucking part. No, then he says, I mean, did you read your mom's diary yet? No, I can't. I'm a little stuck around this dicey baby killing issue. And then he looks me hard in the eye and says, Are you really like a cyborg? Is that your mom's big secret? A what, I say? You know, he says, an artificial humanoid created with a limited lifespan, but implanted with false childhood memories, so you think you're a real person, except you're really going to die soon. And I look at Denny hard and say, So, dude, my mom told you some kind of robot? Is that what her diary says? Denny says. Two women come up holding out a camera, and one says, Do you mind? Say cheese, I tell them, and snap their picture, smiling in front of the cow shed. And then they walk away with another fleeting memory that almost got away, another petrified moment to treasure. No, I haven't read the diary, I say. I haven't fucked Paige Marshall. I can't do jack shit until I decide about this. Okay, okay, Denny says to me, he says. 
then are you really just a brain and a pan somewhere being stimulated with chemicals and electricity into thinking you have a real life? No, I go, I'm definitely not a brain. That's not it. Okay, he says. Maybe you're an artificially intelligent computer program that interacts with other programs in a simulated reality. And I go, what does that make you? Well, I'd be just another computer, then he says. And then he says, I get your point, dude. I can't even figure that out change for the bus. Then he narrows his eyes and tilts his head back, looking at me with one eye cocked. Here's my last guess, he says. He says, okay, the way I figure it, you're just the subject of an experiment, and the whole world you know is just an artificial construct populated by actors, and they play the roles of everybody in your life. And the weather is just special effects, and the sky is painted blue, and the landscape everywhere is just a set. Is that it? And I go, what? And I'm really a brilliantly talented and gifted actor, Denny says. And I'm just pretending to be your stupid masturbation addicted loser best friend. Somebody snaps a, snaps a picture of me gritting my teeth. And I look at Denny and say, dude, you're not pretending anything. And my elbow is some tourist guy grinning at me. Victor, hey, he says. So this is where you work? Where he knows me from? I haven't the foggiest. Medical school, college, a different job? Or it could be he's just another sex maniac from my group. It's funny, he doesn't look like a sexaholic, but nobody ever does. Hey, Maud, he says, and elbows the woman he's with, this is the guy I'm always telling you about. I saved this guy's life. And the woman says, oh my gosh, so it is true. And she pulls her head into her shoulders and rolls her eyes. Reggie here is always bragging about you. I guess I always thought he was exaggerating. Oh yeah, I say, old Reg here, yeah, he saved my life. And then he says, anymore who hasn't. And Reggie says, are you making out okay these days? I tried to send as much cash as I could. Was it enough to take care of that wisdom tooth you needed, Yank? And then he says, oh, for crying out loud. And a blind chicken with half a head and no wings and shit smeared all over it stumbles up against my boot. And when I reach down to pet it, the thing's shivering inside its feathers and it makes a soft, clucking, cooing sound that's almost like a purr. It's nice to see something more pathetic than I feel right now. And then I catch myself with a fingernail in my mouth. Cow crap. Chicken shit. See also histoplasmosis. See also tapeworms. And I go, yeah, the money I say, thanks, dude. And then I spit and I spit again. And there's a click of Reggie taking my picture. Just another stupid moment that people have to make to last forever. And Denny looks at the newspaper in his hands and says, So, dude, can I come live at your mom's house? Yes or no? Well, that's chapter 19. Denny is moving in with Victor. Things are going to get interesting now. Well, I hope that you all have a lovely afternoon. And I'll see you next time.